I'm about to reveal five key web design principles that the most successful brand on earth uses to sell their products. Then I'm gonna teach you how a non-web designer like yourself can replicate their designs using Thrive Architect. Stick around to find out who this brand is and what you can learn from their bleeding edge web designers. Hi, I'm Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes and this is just your friendly reminder and command to both hit the like button and to subscribe to our awesome YouTube channel to make sure that you do not miss on any future content. All right, so if you've never purchased an Apple product, you must have at least heard of the company, either that or you've been living under a rock for the past 40 years. Well, I'm gonna walk you through five web design principles that you can learn from Apple and how you can replicate them with Thrive Architect. Let me start with a quick confession. I am a huge Apple nerd myself. I buy Apple products, I watch Apple keynotes, I buy Apple shares whenever I can. I mean, I'm really not sure how much of an Apple nerd one can get. And one of the reasons why I love Apple so much is because their products just work. You hold your AirPods next to your smartphone and they instantly connect. You walk up to your laptop with your Apple Watch on and it automatically locks you in. It kind of feels like magic in a way. And something similar happens with Thrive Suite products, right? I mean, you install Thrive Theme Builder, you power through the Thrive Theme Builder wizard, you pick out some colors, you pick out some fonts, and boom, in 10 to 15 minutes, you've got a fully functioning website. It just works. I think this is literally the closest that you can get to feeling like a wizard. All right, let's jump into the meat of the video. Apple does a fantastic job of portraying their simplistic and minimalistic way of building their products right upon arriving on their homepage. I'm recording this video in July of 2022, so depending on when you visit apple.com, it's gonna be obviously a little bit different, but the flow and the aesthetics for the most part have been the same over the past few years. So let's dig into these five principles that I wanna cover. The first one is content sections. Apple does a phenomenal job at arranging their pages with content sections. But what are content sections? Well, if we were to put the idea behind content sections into Thrive language, it's simply how we arrange our content using background sections and content boxes. What you often see Apple doing is breaking up sections by switching background colors. For the most part, they either stick to white or black, sometimes a very light gray. I really like doing this, especially when you combine it with a really good use of internal paddings. And I really like doing this because it's really easy for people to process the fact that they're transitioning from one idea to a different one when they notice that contrast in background colors. On their current homepage, for example, they're actually not doing this that often. You can see how they go from talking about their MacBook Air to the iPhone 13 Pro without switching background colors. But there is enough breathing room in between sections for us to understand that they've transitioned over to a new topic. Plus, since there isn't that much text around the images, you're kind of clearly concentrating on the main headings. And so you can read that, hey, you know, MacBook Air, picture, iPhone 13, picture. It's very clean, very simple. It's very easy to follow. I personally still like it better when you switch over the background color a tad bit, but in this case, it works. The second principle that I wanna cover is smart responsiveness. When I say responsiveness, I don't just mean hey, let's make sure that our buttons and that you know our text looks good on both mobile and desktop. Take a look at what Apple is doing with their product shots. They're changing them. The images are not the same for both desktop and mobile devices. And if you think about it, this actually makes sense. Some landscape images are simply not going to look good on mobile devices. And it makes sense to come up with product shots that display well exclusively on portrait screens. This is why it's important that you make sure that you're prepared to change images or that at least you've got variations of your product shots that look good on all devices. So you can swap them out in case they don't look good on bigger, lar larger screen sizes or smaller screen sizes. And I wanna emphasize on smart responsiveness by looking at their header, at what they're actually doing with their header. The header and the website itself looks great on all devices. And it's super easy to navigate around Apple's website on larger screen sizes because, well, they've got listed inside their navigation menu all of the possible product categories that you may be interested in. And when you switch over to a smaller screen size and you can't have all of those navigation items listed in there because you simply don't have the screen real estate to do so, they just completely switch over to a new header that consists of a sandwich menu, 
a you know the apple icon and then your shopping bag in other words they've got two headers that are completely different from one another that are fully optimized for their own respective devices and depending on what device visitors are using they toggle one or the other this is literally smart responsiveness and the best news is that this is actually super easy to replicate with thrive architect inside your main header you're going to have one content box for larger screen sizes and then you're going to have a different content box for mobile devices and simply toggle one or the other depending on what device your visitors are coming from and you can fully customize these two different content boxes however you want make sure that you at least optimize one of those content boxes for smaller screens like mobile phones and then make sure that the other one well with the other one you can get a little more creative like apple does and start filling it up with uh, navigation menu items, a call to action, your logo, and so forth and so on. The third key principle that I want to cover is conversion focused pages. Newsflash, people working at Apple are smart. Yes, even though they are Apple and yes, even though they keep eating revenues quarter after quarter, year after year, they are still completely concentrated on building conversion focused pages. It doesn't matter at which content section you're looking at, you're going to find at least one main call to action. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of having more than one call to action on the main hero section of your website. Leading people onto two different paths can be a little bit distracting. I mean, you should have a crystal clear idea of what you want people to do upon arriving on your website. So typically offering two separate ways is just not a very good idea in my opinion. But since Apple does sell really expensive high-end products, it can make sense why they want to give people the possibility of learning more information about the products instead of just immediately sending them to a shopping page. Do you guys know what I wonder? Is there a direct correlation between the fact that Apple is the most valuable company on planet Earth and they're completely committed to building conversion focused pages a correlation or just a coincidence no but seriously take a look at their homepage. no animations no sliders no fancy nancy nothing it's just a page with great product shots crystal clear copy crystal clear call to actions completely conversion focused well i am lying a little bit here i did find one spot on their homepage where they were making use of a slider but it's at the very bottom of their homepage, right above their footer. Meaning that you've had to scroll down to the very bottom of their homepage to be even allowed to get distracted by a slider. But I think I found a legitimate reason why they're using a slider to promote their Apple TV Plus streaming service. Pick any streaming service out there, whether it's Disney, Apple TV Plus, Netflix, just any of them. What happens when you log into the streaming app itself? Well, you're literally presented with a slider, a slider that's made up of a bunch of featured titles that are currently available for you to stream. And so by recreating that very same feeling on their website, it kind of sends a signal to your brain that you should check out the Apple TV Plus streaming service in a way. I mean, I'm telling you, they are playing mind tricks here with you. Key principle number four, fonts. Small hint, there is a free Google font that you can use. It's called Enter. It's pretty much very similar to the one that Apple uses. It's the one that I'm using to rebuild Apple's homepage using Thrive Architect. So yeah, do what you wish with that information. But yeah, Apple does a phenomenal job again of making use of fonts, mainly because they only use one font. I'm a huge fan and a huge proponent of only using one font. You can use up to two fonts if you wanna use one for main headings and then one for body paragraph text, that's fine. But I am a strong proponent of just using one font. What Apple does to make sure that there's, you know, somewhat of a contrast amongst different headings and stuff is using different weights for the same font. If you do this, your website is gonna come out nice and clean and you're still going to be able to prioritize some headings and people are gonna be able to grab key ideas from your website copy kudos to apple it's a great technique and number five the power of grids apple has picked up this really nice and cool habit of using columns to showcase different topics i really can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to invest in good product shots it doesn't matter if you're selling computers if you're selling coffee if you're selling clothes if you're selling it doesn't matter what you're selling if you're selling something maybe you're even selling your services good photo shoots are they sell and you can clearly see this on Apple's website. Apple's website is not difficult to build. 
it's actually kind of really easy to build Apple's website using Thrive Architect. But Tony, if it's that simple, why don't all Thrive Architect websites look so cool? Well, for one, Apple does really take great shots of their products and they know how to design them graphically and it's just, it's stunning. So if you'd like to replicate a design like this using Thrive Architect, it's actually not that difficult. You can just drop the column widget on top of your page and pick out whatever layout you'd like to use. To replicate this particular example that Apple is using on their homepage, I'm just sticking two column layouts on top of each other until I kind of just get to the end result. And that's it. Hopefully you learned something out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Important. There's a link in the description box down below to learn more about Thrive Architect. If you like to replicate Apple's web design or if you want to build an online business, you can grab a license to Thrive Suite. We build conversion-focused plugins for WordPress, and it's the best backbone that you can use to build your online business. I'm Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes, and I shall see you guys in the next video.